Hello and welcome to Tom Staniford. Um, Tom is uh, a marketing consultant and lecturer, former British national cycling champion, and one of only 16 people worldwide with NDP syndrome, um, and also a long-standing ambassador of Genes for Genes. So welcome, Tom. Hi, 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 Lynn. It's great to be here. It's great to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so this will be uh, another of our uh, interviews with our Genes for Genes ambassadors. We follow the same format every time. So I'll be asking you our standard set of questions. Um, and if you're ready, we'll kick off. Yeah, no, let's go. Okay. So the first question is always, how would your friends and family describe you? Um, I always hate these sorts of questions because I think it's, it's really difficult to try and describe somebody in such a small uh, period of time. So, however, I've um, I've, I've taken a small cross section um, of my my friends and and family. Um, obviously, making the presupposition that I have any friends, um, <laughs> and uh, they they've got back to me and they they said they they've got I've got a list here. Um, obviously, I'm I'm choosing the the best ones. Of I'm not gonna, just going to ignore all the negative ones. Um, <laughs> and uh, they said I'm determined. Um, and uh, brave and and thoughtful thoughtful so they they were the the ones that kept uh, popping up well that's a very good list of attributes and how did you receive those um i asked them no in the sense of how did you feel about those <laughs> yeah i literally i literally just said okay so i'm doing this interview um <laughs> two three words to describe me <laughs> And then everybody gave me a list, and then I basically cherry picked the best ones. <laughs> oh, no, I like it. I like your style with that. <laughs> um, who would you most um, say that you admired in life? Oh, the internet's gone very bad. Shall I okay, we're back it? now. Um, so, uh, oh, oh. anybody I, I I admire in life? Um, well, um, obviously there's lots of people who who I respect. Um, so it's quite difficult to to select one or two. Um, but I really I really admire. Um, it's a bit left field, but I I really admire Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. Um, and 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 the reason why is because he he obviously started off as a bodybuilder, and then he became one of the biggest action stars in films in the world, and then he became one of the most influential politicians in America. With obviously California was the largest state, um, and then since then has then also now become a very influential activist. Mm. So he's kind of, it's not that he excelled in one field, he excelled in one, completely reinvented himself, excelled in another, completely reinvented himself, excelled in another. And so I like that he has that kind of consistency of excellence in, in everything he does. Um, so I, I admire him for that. And also, all the, obviously, I don't know him personally, but all of the um, the videos I've seen of him, he's very articulate, he's very thoughtful. He he just seems like a, a really well balanced, um, interesting person. Um, so, I... Barack Obama, um, I thought he was a wonderful president for America. Um, he was just the epitome of a statesman, I think. I just think that he was just really, really um, stable. Um, he had a certain dignity about him that I find really, really endearing. Um, <clears throat> I think probably those two. Yeah, that's very interesting choices. Um, maybe we'll tag them uh, when we put this out on social media and you might get to meet them, you never know. Um, yeah. <laughs> Leading on to the next question, and I wonder if this links with your uh, most admired people, but what would you say is your favourite book or movie of all time? 
Okay, right. Well, on the movie front, there's one clear one, and it, because it's the only movie I've ever watched and then immediately watched again right. um, in, in, a, in an epic kind of movie evening, um, and that was The Matrix. Oh, um, fabulous movie. Um, I like Keanu Reeves anyway. Um, and the Matrix 2 and 3, they kind of went off the boil a little bit and they were a little bit complex, but the first Matrix film really just ticks all the boxes for me. There's lots of action, uh, there's some really good dialogue. There's, there's obviously CGI, but none of it's ridiculously over the top. It was at the time when, you know, CGI was making big explosions and big cool effects in movies, but it wasn't ridiculous like we're now starting to see in, in lots of the big blockbusters. You just think, really? Is that... Yeah. That's, yeah, that's too much. At the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And a really thoughtful so, movie. It really prompted an awful lot of reflection, I thought. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, I don't have a religion as such, but if I had to choose a, a philosophy, then I'm kind of a, a secular Buddhist um, and a kind of non-religious Buddhist. And The Matrix is basically um, a Dharma movie. It's basically Buddhism in a nutshell, um, with how we kind of... Is, is, this, is this reality reality? Is, yes. is it real, you know? The, uh, the, do, do we really have a sense of self? Is there such a thing as like I? Yeah. You know, who am I? Uh, because obviously I'm I'm only the the result of my experiences and my reality, and of course all of my senses can be deceived. So how much do I really know is real? Mm. Um, and kind of waving that in as a computer program was was quite novel and quite interesting. Yeah, um, so anyway, it's just a great film. Brilliant film. And it's that willingness as to how far down the rabbit hole you're willing to go with these things as well, isn't it? Like a lot of people choose not to not to look into these things and just happy to tick on. But, you know, taking making that choice to really kind of go in and, and kind of absorb yourself and think about, you know, just just how complex everything is and, and who you are. I think it's a fantastic prompt from that movie. So if there was one cause you'd fight for. Or if you could change something in the world, what would it be? Um, well, I think obviously I'm a little bit biased uh, because I have several um, ongoing medical issues, but I think that the most important thing in the UK currently is a nationalised health service, um, or, or more specifically, keeping the one that we already have. Yes. <laughs> Um, and so uh, have it, having an NHS, uh, in addition to being really a fundamental human right with access to, to healthcare and medical things, I think it's really, since its inception, you know, decades ago, the NHS has really been something that everybody in the country has profited from. Mm. And when you look at other countries, every single country in the world admires and respects the NHS. And if they're honest, every single country in the world wishes that they had a system like the NHS. Yeah. And we seem to be throwing it away. <laughs> and it just seems to be bizarre. I don't, I don't understand why we, we've attained this absolute triumph of socialised healthcare that is respected throughout the world, and we just seem to be giving it away. Mm. And so I think that that would be probably the top thing that I would want to change within my community, within the UK, you know, for us as, as a nation and as a people, um, would be to maintain the NHS. And, um, you know, unfortunately, things have got more costly. Um, and the only way, potentially, of being able to fund that is to um, raise more public funds. Yeah. Which seems to me to... Um, greater taxation for, for higher incomes. Mm. Um, and and that, that's the only practical way I can see of assuring what something that we all benefit from. Yeah. Um, I think you take for granted just how lucky we are having it. And then when it's put under threat, it makes you realise just how unique and powerful the NHS is. 
Yeah, well, I think that we, we already starting to see people who, you know, regretting missing out because obviously certain services within the NHS have already been privatised or sold off and we're already starting to see people going, well, this isn't, isn't as good as it used to be. Why isn't it as good as it used to be? Like, well, it's because it's no longer publicly owned. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not, our focus is no longer on providing effective health care for people. Our focus is on profit because we're a private entity mm. and so the people are always going to lose out yeah yeah sad sad to see it happening at the moment isn't it okay thank you tom um moving on to more genes for genes specific questions now um obviously the the campaign that we ran in 2022 prompted everybody to um the question was how do you wear yours and it was really what what would you wear or what would you accessorize with your jeans for jeans for jeans week so what would you say would be your perfect accessory or your perfect partner with your jeans um well i think that part of the success of jeans for jeans as a campaign is that Jeans go really well with lots of things. <laughs> they <laughs> go well with everything. Um, and that's kind of so I wouldn't say there's a definite item or accessory that really works well with jeans because it, it will go with anything really. <laughs> uh, but for me personally, because of that, it would be just something very everyday that you can get away in most situations. So it would probably be just um my favorite t-shirt. Um, what so is your favourite choose, t-shirt? Choose, choose a nice t-shirt that you like, you know, the colour of, with a good, decent slogan or, or band or film that you, you like. Um, and you know, Jeans for Jeans did used to offer um, Jeans for Jeans t-shirts, which, right. was, which was great. So I, I would choose that. I'd choose, okay, I'd wear we're that working t-shirt. on it. We're working on a new one. So hopefully my you jeans, have another I would one. Be, yeah, I'd be completely <laughs> on brand. Um, and uh, and you know spread a bit more awareness and just kind of get that visibility out there. Brilliant. If we get another one, I'll I'll make sure we've got one in the post for you. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so, how, when, and why did you get involved with Jeans for Jeans? Um, well, I was um, for the first uh, for the first twenty three years of my life, um, my condition, which is very rare, um, MDP syndrome, was un- undiagnosed um, because they three years, gosh. Yes, well, they didn't, they didn't, um, they didn't know what it was basically. Mm. Um, so we, we, each of the people with MDP syndrome, we have various different um, healthcare issues, and nobody really saw what was potentially the root cause or the underlying reason that we we had each accumulated each of these symptoms. Yeah. And it was only in 2013, um, with the advent of a, a very new type of genomic sequencing technology, that researchers at the University of Exeter um, Medical School were able to identify a, a genetic root cause um, and uh, that was basically when the condition was was identified, um, and they said, "Yeah, well, we you've got this syndrome we've called MDP syndrome, uh, and this is what you've got." Um, and that was in 2013, and it made a global press mainly because um, any topic involving fat is is considered really sexy by the media. Right. Um, and uh, and also the uh, the it was the first time that this new genomic sequencing technology was used. So it was it was a tremendous kind of global interest. And all of that kicked off in 2013 in the global press. And and that's when Dreams for Dreams basically approached me and said, Hey, you know, you've got a You've got a genetic disorder there, um, uh, yeah. because genes for genes used to be part of Genetic Disorders UK. That's right. Um, and, uh, and would you mind considering, you know, being a, an ambassador? And I said, you know, I'm, I'd be delighted to. Uh, what can I do to help? Uh, and that was that was basically it. So that's what, coming up to ten years now. Wow, ten years. 
Um, I don't know if you can still see me, but my video seems to have given up the ghost a little bit there. Yeah, no, you've gone, you've disappeared. I can hear you. You but can hear me. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we can do some, some fabulous editing with this. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that that's that's a fascinating story. And, and 10 years supporting us is, you know, we're, we're hugely grateful for all of your support, Tom. So thank you so much for that. Um, just moving on to our last question. What would you like to see Jeans for Jeans doing in five years' time? Um, obviously, yeah, we just being bigger and better, really. <laughs> just being, I mean, uh, obviously, anything that you you involve yourself in or that you support, you always dream of, of, of obviously seeing them be a success and grow and get bigger and better and yeah. expand their reach and expand their influence and so on. So uh, on a very simple basis, you know, that's what I'd like uh, Jeans for Jeans to be able to do. Um, and because we're obviously spread across the nation, you know, all of the different ambassadors and the, the children and families and people that Jeans for Jeans hopes to support, um, it's not like we have a, a, a single a single event or a single venue you know we're not we're not all living in London or all living in Manchester yeah. so we're really the thing that unifies us all is, is the internet um, and the kind of um, social media and website and a kind of online presence that we have so I think if you could if we could grow that over the next five years and, and really build on the connections between the, the the people involved in the charity and the people who we help and the kind of activities that they do um that would be a really nice thing to see over the next five years i think yeah yeah really picking up all of the 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 changes in in digital and, and technology and, and and exploiting those to our um to our best abilities but i'm i'm sorry my video has gone hopefully like i said we can do some editing on this one um but I just want to say thank you so much, Tom. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. And thank you for your 10 years of support for, for Jeans for Jeans campaign. No problem. It's been a, been a great pleasure for me. Um, thank you for the, the hard work that you do. Um, and uh, obviously, good luck for the future. Hopefully, we can continue to grow.